the topic for today, I have named it a call to accepting the call. A call to accepting the call. We are going to read the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast not done this, thou art cast above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. 15. And I'll put an an en and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and shall and thou shalt bruise his heel. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Speak to us, O oh God. Divided to meet each and every one of us, O oh God. Since you know us very well, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Nimeona amengia. Titus, just stand and wave to the people. Yes. Yes, that is Titus Jenga, my Titus Ngogi, and we bless the Lord. Well, when I was reading, so many times I have read this verse. And because we know the story of creation. When God, after he has created the world, he said, let us now create a man. And he gave all this responsibility to this man. He told me that he'll give you authority and dominion to rule and to be fruitful. Praise God. But then we hear the story goes. I want to believe that in the minds of God, that God had a great, this great plan to create a people for himself. To live in the Garden of Eden, to just enjoy, to live in that presence of God. But in the same story that we hear the introduction of sin and where sin, all sin started. And we see Adam has been told to lie. Okay, not told, but he was put to sleep. And this woman is created and his name is Eve. Her name is Eve. And then they are just roaming um, just imagining sweet nothings in the gardens. We are in the youth of it. Yes. So, and it happened that Eve negotiated with the serpent and they ate the fruit. And also, he gave to, to Adam. And when Christ had come back to just come and look at his people, how they are doing and all that, he, f he doesn't find them where he left them. Because the previous verse says, and they hid themselves because they realized they were naked. They hid themselves. And after that, they, there's a whole conversation. You can go and read about it. There's a whole conversation about that whole scenario. And here are the verses that we have read. We are seeing that God is now cursing the serpent. And he's telling him that that you shall crawl on your tummy for all the rest of your life. And the seed of the woman, the crawling part, we are not interested. And the seed of the woman will crush your head. And the seed of the woman will crush your head. As you continue, it says that and you will bruise the heel of the seed of a woman. Are we together up to that time? Up to that, up to, up to that point. That you will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. And we see, even if after the fall, you know, the mercies of God are so great to the extent that even if after the, the human had fallen, God still had this great plan to redeem mankind to redeem mankind and you can see even the way the serpent shetani just wanted to halt this this plan we can see even when christ was born and i just at first herod was very innocent 
He said, please just go. He was telling to the wise men, just go. And after you see him, tafadhali, come and tell me. And I will also go and worship him. But badaye shetani, haka muingia, haka jua. Because that is a king. He felt threatened. And he wanted to kill that. They wanted to kill our savior. Little did they know that the great plan of God, nothing can stop the plan of God. And we know this seed, Jesus Christ, crushed the head of the serpent. This seed, the ultimate seed of the woman crushed the head because he died for our sins. He took all our infirmities. He took all our sins and everything. All the punishment that was to be upon us was put upon him so that we may be counted sanctified and righteous. After he had seen, he is not able to halt Jesus Christ coming to die for us. Guess who the target is? It is you and me. Because he knows the great and wonderful things that Christ has kept us. Here on earth and above in heaven after the trumpet has sounded. Praise God. He knows the great plan that God has. He knows because this, this, there is a thing that says that people with great destinies are tested much. Like if you see so many things coming to your life, just know it. They are preparing you for greatness. And this is the bruising that we are talking about today. That you are the target for the devil so that you may not leech eternity. Praise God. That despite the great sacrifice that God made for you and for me, his great plan is to make sure where we usifike binguni and he will do everything possible, everything possible to make you not to go. Praise God. He is making every effort to destroy us in every single minute. Praise God. That he continues to bruise our heels. That the much he can, the truth of the matter is, the much he can do is just bruise your heel. There is nothing else he can do. Praise God. The only thing he can do is just to bruise your heel. Nothing else. Just a bruise on your heel. Realizing, the, realizing that we are more than the bruise that the devil has. Made on our hill should make you and should make you know that it's just a bruise. Nika kidonda tu kadogo ivi kana kata pona ivi. Pona iswa sifiwe. It's just a bruise. As we talk about the theme of the year, Isaiah 41, 14 to 16, it says that fear or not, warm Jacob, for I will be with you and I will make you. I'm just paraphrasing it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, guys. That fear not thou, warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, I will help thee, say the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountain, and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Through the, the theme of the year, we are told that fear not. Usiogope. Usiogope. God knows that the bruise is there because we have different kind of bruise, bruises. Sawa, sawa. We have different kind of bruises. But the Bible say, but the Bible does not say that you, you who feels long, who feels strong, uh -uh, it says you. You may not feel strong, you may not feel capable. You may not feel any kind of thing. As far as God's plan in your life is concerned. But it says, you, I will help you. The Bible says that I will make you. It doesn't say that you who is confident, I will make you into a, into a new sledge. It doesn't say you who feel strong, I will make you into a New sledge. It doesn't say that you who believe in yourself, 
that I will make you into this new sledge. It says, I will make you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Let's just look for one example, one character in the, in the, in the Bible. The book of Judges chapter 1. The story about Jeff. That I just love this story. I know I have said we we'll read from 1 to 29, but we just read in snippets. And now Jephthah the Gileadites was a man, a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of Ahalot. And Gilead began, begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. We'll hold it up to there. First of all, we see that Jephthah is a Gileadite. A, a Gilead died. And he's also a child of a a child of a a child of a harlot. In the, in the current dispensation we'll say he's a Alizaliwa out of wedlock. Alizaliwa out of wedlock. And you see the story of Jephthah that it's, it's an amazing that the Bible does not start with the fact that he's a, he's a child of a harlot. It starts that, we go, we go again to the first chapter, to the first verse, Judges 11, verse 1. The Bible says that, now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. The beautiful thing about God that he may know what is the situation that you are coming from. But he doesn't start with that. He starts with the true identity of Jephthah. That he was a mighty man of a mighty man of valor. Because that is what God intended Jephthah to be. His coming to this world may not be appropriate according to us. His coming to the world may not follow the traditional I'm a societal way we think that he should. But God calling him a mighty man of valor because that is what exactly, when that is what God had in mind when he was creating Jephthah. A mighty man of valor and period. Him coming as a son of a harlot, that's the plan of God. The way we, the way we come to existence that does not always follow the protocol. Okay, our protocol. According to human nature. The truth of the matter is, he's a mighty man of valor. But remember, our God is methodical and strategic. Everything he does with a reason. His ways are not our ways. You may think coming to existence is bad or unpleasant. He was intentional about it. He knew what he was doing to see. Because he has a plan. He has a plan upon each and every one of us. He has a plan about your life. Looking at the story of Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3. It is wonderful. It is amusing how we always, we know. At the core of our hearts, we know that we are called to be greater than what we think or how we feel. But in the core, we always see, if you see the story of Moses and, his, and God calls him Moses. That's the other thing. You know, when God wanted to call Moses to go and deliver the children of Israel, right? and he just creating, I just love our God. Yani, our God, on a lighter note, he was dramatic. Yani, a burning bush that is not burning. How, guys, you know, I read the Bible and I'm like, ah, wow. God is just on another level. So Moses sees a burning bush. And this burning bush, akasema, ay, acha nijione. Siata sisi tukiona 
kitu. And he goes and God calls him by name. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. You may think with the situation of Moses, first of all, he is spared from being killed because all the male children were being killed. The other thing is, he is raised in the family of the enemy. Enemy. Sawa, sawa. He is raised in that. As we are speaking right now, he is hiding. Fearing for his life so that he may not be killed because of what he did. And then here God calls him Moses. You may think, I was just walking. God was not just walking and akapatana tu na kijana and this kijana was a shepherd and looking after the cattle of, of, the, of his father-in-law and just, ah uh-uh. ah. God was intentional. He's telling him, Moses. But that's what he said. jirani yako. Kama unajua jina yake, muite jina yako. Muite jina yake. Mwambia, that is how much God knows you. Ati because, maybe, unajua sa zingine uneza sema, mimi nikiwa mdogo, nilikuwa naitua, nilikuwa naitua, like, in my case, when I was born, my name was Tabitha, not Dorcas. But when I came to know myself, nikajipata na jina Dorcas. You may think God knows na ile ya birth certificate. Uongo. Anajombaka nilichenji wa jina. Bona isu asifiwe. You may think that because maybe you had uh, this kind of surname and then later, you know, right now you have a different surname that he doesn't know you, he'll have to look for you. Uongo, he knows. Look at the story of Gideon. When an angel comes to Gideon, when he was dressing there, the Ngano, Sindio, at a wine press, he's hiding himself also. And the angel of the Lord says, that the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And we see Gideon doing all these things. The things that we do most of the time. And he's, he's like, I am sure he was like, you're talking to me? Like, mighty man of valor, you're talking to me? But nice was a favorite. And on, in all this, Gidons, we see him telling, I'm sour, if God, you want me, I come from the smallest of the clans. So, sanani ame kuuliza iyo. Kuuliza jirani, mungu wanajua kwenye umetoka. God knows the situation at hand. Praise God. God knows the situation at hand. It is okay. You can do. Do like Gideon. Tell God, Sawa, if God, this is you and you're telling me to do this, I will put this fleece here. And if it, is ra- it rains everywhere else and the fleece is dry, I will believe it is you. And then God does it. And then he comes and says, Miss Sawa, you did that, but I am going to put the fleece again. Now, if the fleece is wet and everywhere else is dry, I will believe it is you. And then God does it. I have looked in the Bible to see when God maybe introduces someone with their faults. I can't see anywhere. Oh, your weaknesses. Those things that are mentioned, they are always mentioned for formalities. To understand. Look at, I, I love how David was described in the Bible. In the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. That now, after Samuel had gone to look for, uh, had been told to go in the house of Jesse. Because there is a king there that will need to be anointed. And um, a king there that need to be anointed. And... Samuel sees Eliab and says, Woo, this muscular and six pack and whatever is the one. And God told him, Apana siyo huyo. And then he brings all the sons until we see David being brought in the picture. And the Bible says that now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. The Lord today, this morning, he's saying that you are the one. You are the one that I am calling you. You may accept this call that I will make you to a new sledge because a whole Israelite is waiting for you to step up so that you can save them. 
that because of you, they will be able to thresh mountain. Praise God. We not even go in the story of Jeremiah because Jeremiah tells God this, I am not ata, ata si ongeangi. Like, ata si and then, and before he says that, there is this whole conversation they've had with God. And I'm like, Kwa ni ukua na unge yu pat? They've already had, before he comes to tell Christ, to tell God that uh, I don't know how to talk. He had already talked, given a whole conversation. Before we come here to verse 5, he tells God, you know what, Mungu, I don't even know how to talk. See, you've been talking with him. How have you been talking to him? It is okay in, this, in those situations, God will touch your mouth. He touched the mouth of Jeremiah. In every equipping that you need, God will do it for you. Because he says that I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Among the people mentioned here, apart from David, the rest had something to say about God and about their capabilities. They had something to say. But when you come to God, you don't really have something to say. Your say does not count. What count is what God had. Your book of creation, when they decided, you know what, we are going to create this wonderful PK. He had everything written. So your say does not contribute anything. He, the call is, he's just want you to accept the call. The bruising we are talking about, the few things that keep us from stepping up to what God has created us to be. The things that makes us so blind to the things of God and what he's doing in our life. Praise God. Going to the back to the story of Jephthah, we see him being driven away from being driven away from his home because he's a child of a harlot. And then after the sons of the home have grown, they said, please, toka kwetu, you're not going to inherit anything from this place. So just go. And you see Jephthah going and going to a place called tomb. And the Bible says that he dwelt there and the worthless men went out with him. Let us note. It says, went out with him. It is not him who followed them. It is them who followed him. If you read the NKJV, it says, it initialized. That one. They went out raiding. That they went out raiding. You know, if you raiding, for you, you need, to, you need skills. And um, I believe that even there, as they are doing this, all these raidings, for them to be successful... They needed a lot of practice. They had, I'm thinking they already had an army. He had already created an army out of these worthless men. Because they are raiding, going to raid. Raiding is attacking and possessing. But we are, talking, we are looking at the positive. Raiding is negative. So it's something negative. We are looking at the positive side of it. They had army skills. They use strategy. You have to be very strategic for you to be successful in those kind of missions. But the world, remember, the worthless men followed him. That is what happens. The moment you step up to what God has called you, everybody that comes along you, their life has to be changed. Praise God. That the beauty of not allowing things and circumstances to hold you back, you will bring purpose to people around you. In your family, in your friend circles, in your workplace. Praise God. We see the story of Jethan and then uh, the, the, the children of Ammon comes to, they want to fight Israelites. And then the Israelites are looking for someone to come and lead the army. And then they remembered, I, I want to believe they, have, they, they must have heard what Jephthah was doing. He was raiding and he was being successful because he has not been killed up to this point. But I saw Sifiwe. And he says, let any twende kwa nani? Kwa Jephthah. And then they go and tell him, you know what, we are looking for a leader. And we want this leader. And we want, because this Ammon, 
Ammonites, they are attacking us. They want to attack us. Praise God. They want to attack us. And we want someone who can come and lead us into a battle to, uh, together with them so that we may win upon them. Jeff Dana wauliza sawa. If I come, will you make me your leader? I want to believe because Jephthah also reminds them, remember, you guys, you are a contributor, the elders, you are a contributor of me being pushed away from my father's house. Many a time, if I was Jephthah at that point, I would like, but Jephthah, despite reminding them that he never carried that to heart. He still went out and because situation that God calls us to, they always don't sit right with us. The situation that God calls us to, they will not sit right to us. Don't think Jephthah would have been just in a... a we would think if Jephthah was the, illeg the legitimate son of the in the in his house that we was doing expect at least at a more you don't understand but let me tell you the situations at hand the things the circumstances the way god works works in mysterious ways and we not always work the way you think because in the story of jephthah he tells them misawa but you have to promise me if i come i will be your leader and they said yes Praise God. Not allowing situations and circumstances and to deter you or to blind you from seeing what God is doing. Jephthah did not carry offense. He didn't tell them, now that because you guys pushed me away from my mother's house, I'm at my father's house. I will not help you. So you guys, you can do this. Go and just die in the battle. Guys, peace out. It's been real. It is your problem. Your problem? Yes. It is your problem. It is not my own. But he stepped out. And there's some things that Jeff that does after that. He followed the, lead, the elders and he goes to Mispa to talk to God. We see the faith of Jephthah in this story. That he goes put for us uh, Judges 11 from verse 6. From verse 6. And they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain that we might fight in the children, with the children of Ammon. Verse 7. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, do not ye hate me. And ex did not ye hate me and ex expel me out of my father's house. And why are ye come unto me now when you are in distress? Verse 8. Verse 8. Yeah, we see there in verse 7, he's just reminding them and telling them. And after he followed them, I told you that he goes, as you continue reading the story, he goes to Mizpah and he talks to God and he tells God, God, would you give me victory? Praise God. Give me victory. And he goes. The other thing that he does, he does not just go and tell People, ah, guys, uh, now we are going to war. Ah, uh ah. -uh. He started a negotiation. Negotiation, well. And he tells the children, Ammonites, the Ammonites, and he tells them everything he knows about the Israelites. The Ammonites were claiming that Israelites had taken something that belonged to them. But Jephthah had known that whatever they wanted belonged to to Israelites. 
Wanaesu wasifiwe. Whatever they wanted, whatever they were claiming it is theirs, it belonged to the children of Israel. And we see as you continue reading that story and he's telling them, and he's just in a letter, he's explaining this, that the children of Israel, while he talk a hapa, and they went, they passed the children of what, and they uh, asked them nicely, can we pass, and they refused, and then they conquered the land. Wanaesu wasifiwe. He gives them a whole story so that even by the moment he's going to attack, the moment he's going to attack, it will be with a cause. That knowing the history, knowing what is set for you, knowing what promises and what blessings are yours in the word of God, gives you, should give you a whole confidence to go out and step out and tell the enemy, you know what? Umenikandamiza for a very long time, but it is high time. Today, 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 I'm putting on the armor of God and I'm going to war. That he knows the story of Israelites. He knows the blessings of Israelites. And he knew, why you Ammonites, you want to take the blessing that belongs to my people. It's just a call, Jephthah. Call, Jephthah was called and told, you know what? We need a leader in this. God knew that he was quick enough for him to be a leader. The call. The call. That despite his background, he never allowed it to deter him. Vanessa Sifiwe. He was a man of faith. He went to God and he told God, God, would you give? Because I believe if he didn't have faith in God, would, I, would he have gone to pray to God? No. Because why am I even praying to you? He had. He was very confident in the fact that he knew that God would give him victory. He doesn't doubt his, he doesn't doubt his capabilities. He only doubts the Elders of the Gilead. Because he asked them, that is the only doubt we are seeing. But he did not count. He didn't say, stand and say, oh, uh, um, guys, uh, right now I'm, I'm even, uh, 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 I'm not even in my father's house. Uh, you know, actually, uh, my mother is, he didn't name that. He said, Sawa, that is what you want, Sawa. But he knew one thing that, oh, guys, let me pass Nahapa IV. Let me go and see, talk to one person that I know will give me this victory. That is God. Vanessa Sifire. Praise God. Our God today is asking, in which way are you feeling inadequate? In which way are you feeling inadequate? There's a whole army waiting for you. Your family is waiting for you to step up and stand and say this word of, word of the Lord contains a lot of good things that God has kept for us, guys. Uliza Jiran, in what way are you feeling inadequate? In what way are you feeling inadequate? Because it is okay. Like Jeremiah, you may, not, you may think you don't know how to talk. But God will touch you. He is making you. I want to make you. I will make you. The call has been made. Are you ready to accept this call and tell God? Do you know what? Yes. I may think I don't know how to talk. I may think I am not the best. I may think I am like a small boy like David. I may think, you know what? I'm not even worthy. But I was after all, I am here hiding from being killed because of killing somebody else in the story of Moses. Okay, Now in case you may, God is gracious. You may feel inadequate in all sorts of ways, but God in his merciful way, because there's a whole generation waiting for you to step up. God is waiting for you to make you into a new sledge. New sledge. He will create. Let me tell you. I know we have we have heard over that the scars. Uh, God makes testimonies out of our scars, but it is true. 
You may feel inadequate in any kind of way, but God is here waiting for you. Waiting for you to accept this call. If you could read the book of Second um, Samuel, chapter 6, the story of Mephibosheth. The story of Mephibosheth, that word, um, he was a, a grandchild of Saul. A grandchild of Saul. And we, we know the story of Saul. Saul becomes a king by the grace, by the masses of God. By the masses of God, Saul becomes a king and he rules and then he defies God. And God now says uh, in the previous verses um, of 1 Samuel verses, verse 16, he tells, God tells Samuel that until when are you going to cry over Saul, and then David is in, brought in the picture. But now before that, Saul, we see Saul was a king, right? And he had a son called Benjamin. Benjamin alikuwa arifia nani? Ya David. Oh, Jonathan, sorry. Jonathan, my apologies. Alikuanga arif. Jonathan alikuwa arifia. Ya David. Arif, eh? Arif ni rafiki. See, to you service, guys. <laughs> so, Jonathan was a friend to, to David. And then, after Saul was, had defied God, he was killed in the, in the army. And also Benjamin. And all his army. And you know, if, during those times, if uh, an army was illiko machine, they made sure they killed everything. They even go to their houses and they kill everything including the women and the children, they kill every, to make sure they wipe out that whole generation. So Mephibosheth is left home, and is left home with a nanny or a nurse, one of those. And then when the nurse hears that, you know what, the army has been killed, and these people will be coming to Maliza us, so she runs to go and pick Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. She, she runs and goes to pick Mephibosheth. And at that juncture, he drops Mephibosheth. A child that was whole, akakua nini? Paralyzed. He became, he become, he became crippled. He became crippled from that moment. And you see, but... Uh, Mephibosheth goes and lives somewhere. The Bible does not describe that place very nicely. It doesn't. But later, later after David became the, king, became the king, he says, is there one person, one person that I may show mercy in the lineage of Saul? If you read that story, it is funny how that the human people, Sisi, Sisi binadam, we will describe you with your weaknesses. So David asks one of his servants and says, is there one person in the family, in the house of Saul, so that I may show mercy? This Ziba, and it was Ziba, and I said, eh, lakini ni kiwete. I remember one time, one, I, I remember one time Bishop was preaching and says that as there are some people who have village mentality. That you have allowed where you come from cram up your mind so much that you're, you have, you can, you're so blind to the things and what God wants you to, to be. When I was you you are usha toka kwa yosha go. See, uko in the city. Why are you still carrying the name ya uko? Wacha na yo. Uko ndio kuna ito ivo. Sio wewe. When I was <laughs> that is my nephew crying. Like, don't stop describing yourself with where you come from. That this Ziba says that yes, there is one, but he's crippled. But David, I go like David does not even dwell with that part. He says, uh uh, just go and bring him. And Ziba, I'm just thinking, maybe Ziba thought that. 
If I say that he's crippled, David attach a story. You understand? David attach a story, but David tells him, no, just go and bring that man. Yeah. And we see Mephibosheth coming before David and telling, ah, you come. And he calls him wonderful names and he's like, ah. How? Me, a dead dog. He calls, he calls himself me, a dead dog. In the core of the core, Mephibosheth was a, priest, was a prince. His grandfather, Anaiza Kuamekufa, his dad, Anaiza Kuamekufa, but that, that does not depict the fact that that Mephibosheth was a prince. Today I am telling you that you, God has called you, you are the one he has chosen. You have been called that God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. That I ha he will equip you and he said that you should not worry or should not fear because he is with you. You are a child of God. Praise God. You are a child of God. How I, how I just wish that, that we would get that to the core of our hearts. That just knowing that you are a child of God, the situation may, may not sit right with you. Your family may not sit right with you. Your situation, current situation may not sit right with you. Your lifestyle right now may not Sit right with you. But one thing I will tell you is this. You're a child of God. God created you as a person because he was creating you. And he created you and set you apart. May you agree to this call. And he will make you. He will make you. There is contentment that comes. Once that gets into our mind, just knowing, you know what? Saying like Job. I came to this world with nothing. And I will live with nothing. There's a great contentment that comes. That even when things and you are sitting on that boat and the storms are in a chap of your boat, you sleep soundly. You sleep soundly. You join Christ in that sleep. Because you know I have Christ. There is one, there is one great contentment and great fulfillment that you get when you know that I have Christ. Nothing else matters. Give me you Lord and nothing else matters. Praise God. Your family is waiting for you. You could be the one who will step up. Step up and help them to come out of whatever is holding them back. This generation is waiting for us. We are in the youth service. This generation is waiting for us to wake up and say, we are so tired of these things that are, happy, that are happening and we are going to step up and be what God wants us to be. With all my scars, with all my everything, that I will stand and tell God, God, just make me. Vanessa was if God is asking this morning, will you accept this call that I want you to? I want to make you into a new sledge. Messiah, you may be you may be living a life of sin, but He says, would you come to me and I will make you. You may not even be seeing any worth in your life. But there's a whole generation waiting for you. Even as we live in this perverse world, that God is waiting for us. We are the remnants. If we accept the call. We are the remnants. If we accept to this call, that God is calling us, there are these mountains of alcoholism that I want to deal with and I need someone to stand in the gap. Will you be that person? There is this, a lot of broken marriages in our families and I am looking for one person that will stand in the gap. 
stand in the gap and we change the story of our families. God is calling you. Will you be the one to stand in the gap for our generation? We are so lost in the world of identity. We don't even realize what God did for us in the cross. You don't even realize that God do not associate with where you come from. He knows as you as his child. He knows you as his child. And that, that is all that matters. That your true identity, you are a man of valor and a woman of valor. That in the true identity, I knew you from your mother's womb and I have called you and I have set you apart. And you have been anointed. Will you accept this call? That there is a whole generation being lost out there with sexual perversion and immorality. Will you step? God is looking for one person who will stand and say, it ends with me. It ends with me. All this drug abuse. Would you stand? Would you just call God and tell God, God, yes, I am the one that you are looking for. I am the one. Use me. I may not be able to speak. I may not feel confident. I may be small. I may be like this. I may have come from this kind of a family. I may have gone through this kind of things. But God, I know because you are able to do it. I am ready that you may make me into a new sledge. Make me into a new sledge. Make me into a new sledge. There's a call to every man. Will you be the one to stand in the gap? Stand in the gap and say it is the end from me. I will make sure I stand and be what God has called me so that I will walk with other men and will be what God has called me. I will stand and say, I am the end of every perversion in this family. The Lord is waiting for you. Because there are people who are perishing out there. They don't know God. And God is asking today, will you accept this call? 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 That it doesn't matter whatever it is. I will approach the throne of mercy with all these burdens. As you continue your way to the cross, the burden will just fall out and roll to the tomb. God needs you just the way you are. Surrender your life to him. Surrender everything to him. And he will make you into a new sledge. God will not introduce you at iwewe mwenye ulikuwa na kunywa pombe. Ha-ha. God will tell you, this is my child. This is my child. This is my child to whom I'm well pleased. Pana isu asifiwe. This is my child. Will you accept this call? We need to say it is the end. You know even as you sit down, you can see and you see the traces, the things. When I saw Sifiwe, immature deaths, they have become so rampant. Why? We just need people, young people, to step up and tell God, you know what, even if, even if things do not go well with me, I know that God is able to do above and beyond, exceedingly, abundantly. All these suicides, all this domestic violence that end in death, and the painful things, you find they are young people. 
young people. It is very rare you find a 60, 50 years old killing their, their wives. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. You find a 30 something, a 20 something, a 19, a 20 year old killing their lovers and all that. God today is calling us to stand in the gap for the young people. Young people who have already tied our identity to our prosperity. So when things do not end well with us, when things do not sit well with us, we say, you know what? It's been real, guys. It's high time I go. But one, the, the truth of the matter is, that is running out of the frying pan into the fire. We are the young people who have tied our identity with how much we are able to make. Tying our identity with what we have. Tying our identity with what I am able to achieve or how smart I am. It is high time we rise up and realize that our identity is not tied to all that. Our identity still remains the same. That I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. In fact, from today I can tell you, when someone asks you, who are you? Tell them. I am a child of God. That's the first thing. And then ninaitwa Dorcas. Banaiswa sifiwe because that's the core of what God is tended. God when he was creating you, he looked at you and he said it is good. There is nothing that I saw God created and he said in Abakisha. Everything even after he created the man he said that it is good. So ambia jirani. You are good. Just the way you are, you are good. It is high time. We, stop, we stand and say, you know what? We are changing this. Young people have been associated with all kinds of things. Everything. Ambia jirani, wewe ni wamungu. Wewe ni wamungu. Haichalishu kona nini na ama nini ya una. I love telling, everywhere I go, I love telling people that you are enough just the way you are. With whatever you have and do not have, does not make Wanjala any less of a man. When God created, did not say, let us make a, let us make a human being, and after he gets a job, that is when he becomes a man. The Bible says, let us create a man. So in his whole entirety, he is already complete. Praise God. In his whole and any, that is whole. As he stand like this, he is whole. A man enough. When God was creating us, creating the women from the rib, you are enough. Just the way you are. Not that, uh, let us make a woman that after they give, they are able to To, to, to produce a child that will be a woman. Apana. Just the way we are, we are enough. Whatever else that comes is a blessing. So we should stop tying our identity to everything else around us because our true identity is in Christ. That I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. May we stand. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Today Christ is calling and is asking, are you, will you be the man or the woman to stand in the gap? There's a whole generation getting lost out there. Will you be the man Will you be the woman? Not in the demonstration on the road. Not carrying the pranks out there. But you will stand on behalf of every other woman on your knees. That you will stand on behalf of every man on your knees. And call God on behalf of these young people. On behalf of your family. On behalf of your generation. 
your children to come. Will you be that man? Will you be that woman?